Hi guys, my name is Sabrina and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video about a new sketchbook that I have, which is this one. So I'd say without any further ado, let's get on to it. So as you can see, I have an old sketchbook and a new sketchbook and the old one I just don't like. I've had the new one for a few months now, but the old one you can see it's a spiral one. It's okay. It looks a bit shabby as well because my washi tape did not quite hold up and I haven't really continued in this one, but I wanted to start a new sketchbook and I also wanted to play around with ideas for my Patreon page, which I will link down in the description box below and show on the screen if you want to go have a look because I want to draw some of the images for my tiers up there. So if you sign up, there is like four different tiers right now, but they don't have images just yet. So I want to make those. And I figured, oh, why not try that now while trying out my new sketchbook? So yeah, the old sketchbook is just super handy and the new one should lie flat was the idea. I'm not quite happy with this one because again, there's a spiral in the center and I feel like I just can't use the entire thing. This is how it looks. And if you want to draw on the left side of the page, you're always stuck with the spiral here. So it's very uncomfortable to even try and draw anything on this side so you're stuck drawing on this side and it bleeds through quite a bit as well so that is not very nice so i'd say let's unwrap the new sketchbook and see how it looks okay so the first thing i'm noticing is that like the outside of it feels quite nice I don't know if I can try and paint over this or something. So should I ever get paint in the future? I can try and make like a character on here. Um, I don't know. It probably will take. I don't know how it will look though. That's the problem. So the paper isn't white white. Oh. Okay, well the center lies flat. So you can see here that in the center it lies flat. Maybe just needs some more persuasion or something. So I'll leave the first page free so I can make something there when I want to. And I'll see how different products work. So I have, let's start with pencils. Just a 4, 4D pencil. Now I don't expect the pencils to be an issue. I kind of, expects the markers to be an issue though this is a brush marker or well, a brush fine liner like this all looks pretty nice um, let's try some markers and see how they go before i do that I have this and I know this looks horrendous and as if like I made a mess of it and I did and that was because I used this as a back paper back piece of paper for artworks while I was working in my sketchbook so it wouldn't bleed through so to avoid ruining the other side I'm gonna put it there now I do have to say that the paper feels nice and thick so I have a little hope for mark for my markers not to bleed through I'm just going to try out some random colors. I'm just going to try to get the most offensive colors to see how well it responds. I do have to say they, the markers look quite nice on this paper. So they do look nice and even up here. That looks quite nice. And I suppose I'm picking like the darker kind of colors on purpose. Because I want to see how they respond. So let's check. Okay, so they've kind of gone through here, but I don't see them on this piece. 
so that's a good sign, I think. I think you do have to be a bit careful, though, when it comes to using them in, like, a sketch or something, but... No, this is quite... I'm quite happy with this so far, so that is a good sign. So, as I said, I want to try and see if I can make some thumbnails or some logos for my Patreon page. And what you have on my Patreon page, I have four layers. So, even if you just want to support me, support my channel, support the art that I'm doing, and to help me keep on doing my art, there is even a tier for that. I have tiers where you can see my videos 24 hours beforehand. So if you're interested in being the first one to see my videos, you can definitely sign up and see them on my Patreon page. But even to see my work in progress pieces or my doodles, my sketches, or even to download my line art. I have my line art on there as well. And I think that'd be quite nice for people who are interested in downloading that and coloring it and having their own version of my art in there. So all that you can find on there. But now I need to make some images for it because I have the text, just not the images. So I have, they're all pencil and marker related. So the first one I have is HP pencil. So this is a HP pencil. And I have color pencil, touch markers, and Copic markers. So I wanted to do basically maybe the shape of an eye or something like that, but made with the materials that I'm saying I'm using in those layers. So I think I'm just gonna go and try and see if I can make a few options. And normally I just use these pencils for outlines. And I do have to say, when I was younger, and that was even like 10 years ago, I made my art just with pencils. So I had a number of thicknesses pencil-wise that I've used. So like 2B pencils, 4B pencils, 6B pencils. I've used those to make my artwork. And I was always very happy just using those and nothing else. And I don't know why. I don't know why I never really got into the color work because when I look back or think back even, I know I always love to see the color work of other people. And I probably just thought to myself, like, I wish I could do that. Just, I never started. So I don't know if I just want to go for like ice. Ice is the first thing that came in mind when I thought of making this video. I enjoy making the eyebrows as well. I think when they have like this flick up the start there, it looks so pretty. I should do shading like around in. Hello, this is my skin. I have skin as well. I'm just not a lingering eye on a piece of paper. My lighting right now is not very handy. You can see like the shadow on the paper because my light is coming in from this side. I really need to get like an overtop light just to help a little bit so I don't have it and I can actually see what I'm doing. And I've doodled so much when it comes to eyes. And when I start in a sketchbook, I'm always like, oh, please let this work out. Please let this work out. I know for some reason, the very first thing you do in a sketchbook, you don't want to mess up. And sometimes I just start with a very weird color and just go from there and build it up. So maybe that is what I'm having supposed to do or what I have to do. I suppose in this scenario, I'm just happy that I don't have to kind of draw two eyebrows, especially with the angle that I'm sitting in front of this drawing. <laughs> it won't help, not at all. I am trying to make this look like actual hair, so, so not just a solid blotch of, I, it, yeah, it will be solid blotch of like eyebrow, but a bit like hairs as well. And let's give her blue eyes, because why not? I like blue eyes. 
What I like as well is when people have that dark line around their eyes so you can very clearly see it. Even if these are going to be like temporary thumbnails or temporary images, I think they look quite cute. So we're just gonna start. It's kind of like the same eye over and over again, just with different mediums. God, you can really notice that I'm just not used to lining artwork like this because I'm so wobbly. Oh no. I'm out of skin. <laughs> right, so we're just going to make this one darker then. Um, I have not used my touch markers in a long, long time because I always use my Copics. I don't have refills for my touch markers. So that doesn't help, like at all. These are bullet nips and I really am enjoying the brush nips. I think the last time where I used my touch markers properly was my comparison video where I used touch markers versus Copic markers. And I wish I could do more of those videos. They're kind of fun to do. Maybe I can get some more affordable markers from somewhere and, and do them because that was nice. But yeah, I find them a little tricky to blend sometimes. But I don't know if that's just me. There we go. When it comes to blending them, I hope it will actually work. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I went over it like this, but I can't imagine. I don't really like it when my eyebrow is lighter than the actual eye I'm drawing. Okay, so this is the touch marker. And now I only have the Copic marker version left to do. Again, I don't know why I'm starting at the right side of the page actually, because I have the left side of the page too, so why didn't I start here? Like, I now have a new book. This one should be better than my last one. It would have made more sense. And I kind of like drawing things on their own as well. I don't really draw, I draw a lot of eyes on their own. I don't know why, I think they're very pleasant to draw. I do wonder how this paper holds up the paint as well. I should try that. Okay, so these are my two most trusty Copic markers when it comes to skin tones. So I think I'm going to use those. I hope they're not overfilled because I use a new method to fill. And I think I will share that with you guys as well. I feel that this paper is soaking up a lot of marker. Yeah, see, and this marker is over full. And what happens when one of these markers is too full? They leak. But not in the way you want them to. <laughs> so it's like one big blob coming out in one go. That blends beautifully. Okay, that was a little unexpected. Did not think that would happen. So let me just give her a little bit of pink. The reason why I like my sketch markers so much is these have a brush nip. And the brush nip ends in a point. So for very detailed, or well, more detailed work, you can use the point and very lightly work in the color, and I think that really helps.
I'm quite happy with how the marker responds to the paper. It looks quite pretty. So this is what I come up with so far. I think this is what I'm going to use for now. I might come up with something different in the future, but I have to say the paper responds quite well. It's quite thick, I'm quite happy with it. I can actually use both sides of the paper. I don't know why I didn't use the left side of the paper. It's probably because I'm so used to working on the right side instead. And that's what happened there. But I'm happy that I can use more of the paper, especially if I'm not working with markers all the time, then I can definitely, I won't be bothered by like a spiral in the middle. So that is super handy and super good. I'm really happy with that. As I said, the paper is a nice ways. It does require a little bit of work to make sure that pages are flat, but I think that's just what you have with a new sketchbook. And I wasn't sure what to expect. And I have to say, I quite like this one. And maybe I will just dub this my Patreon sketchbook and just have work for a Patreon page in there and that I can show for my patrons. So again, if you're interested, I'll leave the link in the description box below right there. And I'll put it on the screen too if you want to sign up and just see some more of my work and more exclusive bits of my work as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really like this sketchbook, so I'm very happy that I bought it. I'm finally happy that I finally started in this. It took way too long. And instead of me having like this huge, very old kind of sketchbook next to me, where I doodle on, I should do it in this. And then at least I don't throw it out because that sketchbook is kind of like a throwaway sketchbook. And I think it's nicer if it's in something that I can keep and that I can go through and show you guys what I'm actually making. So that'd be absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.